Hi, my name is Andrew Hull and I'm the Alaska State Representative in the 2012 National Geographic Bee. If you were to come to my hometown of Anchorage, which you can see behind me, there would be a few things that you'd want to do here. If you were to come in the summer, you'd have an incredible selection of hiking, biking, and fishing. The Anchorage Bowl alone has over 20 stocked lakes, as well as many different creeks to fish from. Just to the north in the Matsu Valley and to the south on the Kenai Peninsula, you'll find incredible world-class salmon, trout, and halibut fishing. If you came in the winter, you wouldn't have quite as much daylight, but you would have great skiing, both cross-country and downhill, and the Fur Rendezvous Festival. The Fur Rendezvous Festival was originally a fur auction between fur traders and buyers, but now it is a festival with a bunch of fun, wacky events, like the Downhill Mattress Race, the Outhouse Race, and the An Anchorage's famous Running of the Reindeer. When you come to Anchorage, no matter what time of the year, there are three things you should definitely consider doing. The first thing to do would be visiting the Anchorage Museum. The Anchorage Museum would give you a good background knowledge on Alaska and Anchorage's history. It would also give you information on Alaska's native cultures. The second thing to do would be hike, bike, or ski along Anchorage's coastal trail. Depending on what time of year you travel this trail, you would have a chance of seeing several ton ice flows floating in Cook Inlet, or watching beluga whales chase salmon into Anchorage's very own creeks. The third thing to do would be visit the small town of Girdwood, about 40 miles south of Anchorage. Girdwood is at the northernmost extent of the coastal temperate rainforest. It also has an incredible ski resort, from the top of which you can see seven different glaciers. My favorite geographical fact is that every year, Lake Tonle Sap in Cambodia swells to more than five times its normal surface area, when the nearby Mekong River floods and the river normally draining Tonle Sap flows backwards and fills it with millions of fish. These fish support over 3 million people and provide 75% of Cambodia's annual freshwater fish catch. Hey National Geographic, here's a stumper for you. In 2011, Anchorage-born star skier Keegan Randall won a World Cup sprint race in what German city along the Rhine River? The answer is Dusseldorf. If I had a free ticket to travel anywhere in the world, I would travel to Sardinia, Italy. There I would rock climb, swim in the Tyrrhenian Sea, and eat gelato. In studying, I have found it helps to have a study partner, which is why I have Geo Frosty here. And he helps me study by holding up little question cards with questions on them. And if I get a question right, he just moves on to the next question. But if I get a um, question wrong, he'll turn his head and show me the correct country. In case you're wondering, he used to have a traditional carrot nose, but the moose got it, so he's stuck with eyes and a hat. If I were in charge of the world, the first problem I would tackle would be Ben Roethlisberger. The second problem would be human trafficking, because millions of people are trafficked each year, and nobody should own any other person, unless you own Ben Roethlisberger. If I could trade places with any famous world explorer, I would trade places with George Steller because he was the first European to set foot in Alaska. He first came here in 1660 on a Russian-led expedition. When I grow up, I'd like to be the designer and owner of an eco-friendly fish farm because the world will need more sources of seafood and many current aquaculture practices are not environmentally friendly.